So yes, Julie Robitaille, uh, responsible for languages and social sciences at L'Equipe Choc Pedagogical. So I work alongside Micheline. We work hand in hand to uh, offer all the services that we can. Oh, there you go. <laughs> this is how. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, as you may notice, uh, today's uh, today's presentation is going to be in three parts. We're going to have an interactive activity. We're going to start off with an interactive activity. Then we have an informative portion, and we're going to close up with a bit of a synthesis and questions. So um, hopefully by the end of the session, you'll be, uh, you will have contributed to an analysis of your differentiation reality. You will be exposed to differentiation strategy. You will be invited to further expose differentiation in the classroom. So let's start off with part one. Um, I guess uh, Julie, take it from here, analyze this. Thank you, Micheline. So uh, before I begin and give you the instructions for the interaction activity, I wanna thank Giovanna for being uh, with us this, this morning. She'll be the one sending you to uh, the breakout rooms at the end of this, uh, at the end of the video and so that we can begin the interaction activity. So this is going to be an, inter an interactive activity as you will watch a video on your own. I will, I will start it up in a few seconds. And as you view, I'm going to ask that you make personal notes on two questions. You keep in mind the issues that you see in this video, problems, obstacles, issues with differentiation, and what could be done differently. So in your opinion, what would you fix? How would you fix it? What would you do uh, to, uh, to fix those issues? So that's what I want you to focus on. The video will last approximately six minutes. And at the end of the video, Giovanna will send you in breakout rooms where you will share your ideas with your teammates. So you will share your notes, what you saw that is problematic and what you could do uh, differently. Then I will ask that you assign a note taker and a spokesperson so that you can then uh, contribute to the conversation after the video. And after the video, you have 10 minutes in your breakout rooms and we come back. So if everyone is ready, uh, I'm going to activate the video, get everything started. Hopefully it's gonna work out and you're going to have uh, access to everything we want, of course. Okay, so I'm creating the breakout rooms right while well, they're, they're yes, there. Gonna please. Everybody's gonna go. Yes, everybody's going to go. Yes. Everyone's going into the breakout rooms in three, two, one. You sign me. Should I go to the uh, room? Sign you? You did. You did. You did. Do I go? It's up to you. If you are, you are you going into the room? I just want to verify because I can't set the time, but I'm going to set a timer. Right. So I'm going to okay. set a timer for ten minutes, and you want the breakout. You want the announcement one minute before. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. It's funny. What's wrong? No, it's funny. It <laughs> always makes me laugh. This thing. The stupid breakout room too thing. No, no, uh, Seinfeld, like Saturday Night Live. Ah. Oh fuck! What am I doing? Three, two, one. Okay. So okay, I'll go join them. I'll join the team. Okay. Uh, let me go to my rooms. I can see a lot of people are back. Okay, so while we wait for the rest of the group to come back to the main room, as you can see, 
uh, as I'm sharing my screen, we have a slide in front of us that says discussion. Well, on the left hand side, you have room for issues, and on the right hand side, with room for solutions. And Giovanna and uh, Micheline are going to help me out for this particular section. What I'm going to do is very, very simply call out, uh, call upon the spokesperson for each team. And I'm going to ask you what you had as issues and solutions. And whatever doubles up, we're just not going to type in a second time. Uh, but I will keep the recording so I will know if uh, you had several uh, issues that, uh, that doubled up or that you, had, uh, you shared between teams. So if we're ready, I'm going to pick on team number one. So breakout room number one, spokesperson. And we're ready for your answers on issues and on solutions. We'll break on. So team number one. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were number six. <laughs> oh, were you? Yes, that was number six. It said number six. Well, so, you could very well begin, and that would be absolutely fine. Don't okay, well, not, a, not a problem. Okay, so the context, of course, is a is a social studies context. Uh, the, it pertains to the uh, war and the uh, Nazi invasion in Europe and the, uh, the supply line uh, for uh, from uh, you know the United States and so on to Britain uh, during the, the Great War. Uh, what happens is that the teacher, well, first of all, it's teacher teacher centered. Uh, throughout, and uh, he comes in and he begins with uh, by saying uh, that he's very disappointed in the result, so he's throwing the um, the exams out in the garbage can. So he's sending a signal. He's saying basically, "You're a bunch of ignorant." <laughs> and so this is like a, a classroom that is basically sitting, uh, you know, uh, side by side, like in the old style teacher center he's trying to trigger something with them but it does not work because there is no background whatsoever so what we have here is a, is a case of uh, basically uh, a, a teacher basically trying to get them interested but he finds nothing that uh, they know he finds nothing that he wants to hear he did not stimulate their interest in the subject prior to uh, basically bringing them in. And so he's calling on what they might know, which is nothing. Okay. And so he's, he's, he's in a bind. And so, uh, yes. What would your team do with, the, with things like that? What did you have as solutions, possible solutions? Well, the thing is, you know, at the end, he does mention, uh, the kids mentions, oh, yeah, he said, uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. He said, yeah, those guys. Well, you know, in a case like that, it might be good to uh, start with a movie or a, a media-centered uh, um, little documentary or something. You want to have something that's visual, that's cool, that's going to attract their attention and stuff, and maybe engage them with something like that at first, because you don't start like a, a lecture style, you know, where you're there and you're asking them to basically throw, uh, it's basically the brainstorm idea would work, but you brainstorm when the, you actually have something in your brain. I mean, to say by that, other than, <laughs> than the brain, uh, something that like some background knowledge, there seems to be no background knowledge whatsoever. So after two questions, I would have changed my strategy and I would have said, well, okay, all right, why don't we, and then you, you come prepared to say, why don't we watch a movie on something that I, I would really like to, uh, to, to discuss with you guys. And then you can ask questions about the, and uh, about the movie, about, okay. Uh, and then, of course, it is also another thing too. Um, I noticed that some of the, the, the students are very linear. They are very, um, uh, um, when you tell them something, you gotta be careful what you tell them because they'll retain it against you. Well, I, I thought, sir, that you said there would be no dates. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is the dates. Well, yeah, it's pretty hard not to use dates. It's in a context like this. So you have to be careful what you say ahead of time. He was obviously dancing for a strategy and couldn't find one. You know? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Christian. Thank uh, you very well, much. I, yeah, uh, yeah, if um, 
um, anyway, later on, uh, I'll give you more. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> Maybe no, because because my note because my note taker should should say uh, okay I've got something you forgot to talk about uh, okay but don't oh, worry I need to add because I, I can add if you want yeah please I, do add add to this yeah we added there were missing visual notes we mm -hmm. also asked if he could have defined certain concepts and he didn't give time to think he would ask a question and then he would be like answer right now so that's it we're talking about less prompting giving more time to answer and giving more like visual cues notes and maybe changing the seating chart mm -hmm. yeah. perfect very very good you have thank lots you. of lots of different things to offer thank you so much team number six yeah merci audrey Excellent. So let's hear from another team, another spokesperson. Just tell us what uh, what room you were in and go right ahead. Whatever is doubling up, uh, my note takers will uh, will not type in, but don't worry, you are being recorded. You're on the record. Go what ahead. I'll do is I'll put an X next to the items that are doubling up. Perfect. Good idea. Okay, so another team. We can go. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, so sort of trying to go working what, um, front to back there. We thought, again, the hook is really, really important. Something high interest, motivate the students, and possibly even using a link to current events, such as what's happening in Ukraine, so that, that they can have a, a jumping off point to understand a little bit of that. Um, yeah. Also, we said to deal with the exam issue immediately in a positive way so that it's taken off the table completely and then they can focus on the content mm -hmm. of, the, of the course and then <clears throat> creating a clear task, what, what the really what the question is, and then uh, finding the strategies to deal with that in that maybe uh, having the simple basic question or the simple task and then dividing them into small groups uh, for them to share their own information and be able to reach uh, something that they can share as a group and then using better visual images um, and then maybe even handing out or using tablets or handouts for um, the small group work and uh, I think that's it if my group wants to add something ladies thank you all right so anything else from uh, from that team or so we're ready to move on to an, another one. So anyone who wants to speak up from another team, go right ahead. Um, I can go. Go ahead. So essentially, we we had the same. Um, we came with we came up with to this. Well, my gosh, I need another coffee. We came to the same conclusion as group one and two. Um, I think what's really evident is that the teacher does not know. Um, hasn't hasn't really created a rapport with his students. Um, had he done so, he might have already been aware of the fact that the majority of them had watched Raiders of the Lost Ark and there was something that he could connect with them. Um, I think that connecting key concepts to what's happening today is really important. And it's also really important to connect with, with whatever your students are um, familiar with and interested in. So something like a movie, why not show a clip and take it from there? Um, uh, one of my um, group members said something very interesting. You know, he comes in and immediately dis he, he, he discards the, the tests and completely discards any of the students who may have done well on that test and who may actually be really good at taking tests. So we're talking about differentiation, we have to remember that there are students who thrive on those kind of tests. So maybe, you know, don't get rid of the whole pile and take it on a more case by case and individualized basis. Very good idea. Very good idea. All right. Anything else was, I guess, already mentioned by other teams? Okay, so thank you, Tanya. Uh, next team, someone from another team, go ahead. We have a minute and a half or maybe two minutes that we can, uh, that we can spare now. Go ahead. There's a hand, uh, Tanya Batista, Tanya. 
Yes, I just wanted to add a comment because um, we talk about a lot about differentiation uh, when it comes to the students and act activities for students. But I mean, the teacher himself did not have a plan B um, because he just gave up on the students after he saw that nothing was working. And I'm, I'm, I don't even think his plan A was very good. But the teacher also needs to have different plans on, on what to do throughout the session of the, the course. Mm -hmm. you know, when when he's faced with this type of situation where something's not working, you also have to differentiate your teaching and your own planning. Excellent. Just a, point. Just, just a comment. But it's a very excellent point. Thank you very much for putting that out. Uh, anyone else from another team? Okay. And um, my understanding that everything that uh, you had in your team conversations was is already on on our slide in either of our boxes i may uh, want to add oh sorry vera I no want, i just wanted to say okay go go ahead go ahead go ahead i just want to mention that he was not prepared like he didn't know where he was going he was like just trying stuff but there was no plan like he was all over the place so that certainly didn't help all right uh vera you wanted to add something we're going to close with you yeah no just to say that maybe he could have uh he could have begun with a, a recap of the previous lesson um just to get their brains in that direction like you know he wanted to talk about britain and what and whatnot but uh so maybe just what did we do the previous lesson or what did we talk about or what was on the test and then you know start with the, with the hook or okay so finding a, a a way to go back on prior knowledge and then segue into that new uh that new session right excellent thank you very much for all your comments this, this was awesome uh we're going to move on because michelle is up next with uh the uh the informative portion of our workshop up. So without further ado, Micheline, your time starts now. Well, uh, well, as you notice, these, this is like, I was, in my group, I was actually part of a group and, and they were saying, you know, oh, this is funny. It's on Saturday Night Live, but it's so representative that what we see in like high school classroom. And then I asked the question, how is it in adult ed? And they said the same thing that we recognize these characters, we recognize these situations. So it's not really very far fetched from reality. So that being said, uh, as we discussed, as we just discussed, our students face um, a lot of challenges in our classroom. So many ways of grouping these challenges, um, we categorize them into three groups, what we call mechanical, environmental, emotional, sensory, and cognitive. So several differentiation strategies exist in accordance with those challenges. So let's take a look at some of them. So notice here, um, Thomason and Allen define differentiation as teachers reaction responsibly to a learner's need. As you may all know, our age students need, um, need all their needs is different and varies, but the goal still remain the same. Maximum growth, individual success, and independent and autonomous learner. We want to build these autonomous learner. So like I've seen it sh showed up and I was so, so happy to see that knowing your student getting them involved, experiment with them is the secret ingredient for any magic potion in education. So that being said, when we're looking at the environmental strategy, as the name suggested, it deals with mechanical environmental adaptation to enhance the best possible condition for learning. As mentioned by some of you, while analyzing the video, again, the desk are in rows, the setup, the, the, sitting, chart, the sitting chart, uh, the clutter classroom. I know in some, uh, and again, in some, um, in some groups, it was mentioned. It was mentioned that the walls are bears, and some of the classrooms are not used. They're like from the 80s, and 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 they're not set up. So maybe a new classroom configuration may come in handy. So remember that we all learn differently. Some of us like to learn alone. Others in groups. Others may need more of our support. So these are all ideas. Um, they might be very important pointers to take in consideration when we lay out a classroom. 
I know some of us do not have choices. We move classroom, but maybe as a vision, you know, that we may come together with the teacher we share in the classroom and may think of those things that may be useful to both of our teachings. And that also applies to virtual classroom, which is the new thing on the block. Um, since, of course, due to COVID, virtual classroom now requires also some organizational, like um, organization, uh, such as providing our, uh, our student with the opportunity also to work alone in a breakout room or just simply say, okay, this assignment, um, take 15 minutes or half an hour, close your camera, close your, 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 your microphone and do it and come back. So by just doing that, allowing them to go to their kitchen table and do the work. Or, or allowing them into a, a breakout room. Or also for some student who requires that group interaction, giving them uh, the opportunity to have also a breakout room where they can meet up and have this conversation. And uh, for example, for the ones who requires a bit more attention to have well, obviously the main room, if you want, that's where the student who requires a bit more, um, let's say support, they come and see you and consult you. You could do the one-on-one -on -one or the, maybe the couple on one. Of course, that comes with the promotion of digital well-being, screen times and all, and digital citizenship that always have to come, which is all new things that we kind of are building as long as we go, right? So uh, some research have shown also, which I found super interesting, the teacher's perception facing, um, facing a physical uh, need uh, in their teaching, um, facing their teaching's need in a physical, uh, physical space is very different from the student's perception. The teacher's perception rely heavily on the way of the del delivering of content. So, okay, I want them to work together. I want them to work alone. I want to get the, them to the message across. So their perception is very centered about the content delivery versus if you really think about what's the student's uh, perception of the physical space, a lot of research says that they focus on the actually the condition of the learning environment. So um, example, again, like we said, teacher may design the room in terms of individual work, group work, to teacher mediation spaces, while students can be concerned, I require more surface to, to lay out my stuff, I need more space. I may require a place where I could physically move while I'm thinking, so I could stand, I could lay down. So this is my way of thinking and my way of learning. Uh, I may need, okay, the temperature in this room might be just right. If it's too cold, if it's too hot, it actually bothers, you know? Again, we know in our classroom, we have the average student that could overcome these obstacles, but for our vulnerable students, these become extremely, extremely important, right? So, um, and we all know in, in, our, in our classroom, we're talking about more, more of the vulnerable clientele than the regular clientele. So these things have to come in in mind. Um, uh, the same thing goes again for virtual classroom. Again, uh, due to the steep learning curve that the teachers had to kind of learn in a short time about what is this whole virtual world requires, a lot of our teachers also transferred what they do in classroom directly to the virtual classroom without adapting also the environment. So this is something, again, there's no right recipe or wrong recipe. This is just food for thought for you to think about, okay, well, maybe I should kind of start thinking about um, my, visual, uh, my virtual classroom. What would the students need? Did I ask them? Do they need like actual breakout room? Do they need like time? What works better with them? So these are all things that maybe we should start considering since now, unfortunately, this is our new reality and we have to kind of juggle between physical spaces and virtual spaces. So now look at the, the um, if you take a look on your screen, the, 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 um, the slide that I have in the front of you, if I move for the next one, please. Uh, so take a look at the information gathered on these two slides. So go back again, please. Which one of you prefer this layout versus the next one, please? This layout in the chat box. Can you please tell me which one you prefer? Number one, which is this, or number two, which is this? Let's take a second, like a couple of seconds and see. I'm getting an overwhelming response for number two. So noticing that 
why if we take a look why some some of us like unfortunately like you know i'm not gonna age us like uh, like uh, put a date on our age but uh, it didn't it didn't matter the teacher didn't care if we liked or not the presentation of our powerpoints so we just had to adapt and that's it that's all but unfortunately uh nowadays notice again we were not those students teachers in general are not the students who struggle they're not the students who have difficulty in their learning. They're the ones who've done well. So they have that capacity to adapt. So making our document accessible to all our students, sometimes we kind of neglect or take for granted. So taking a look on this slide over here, notice I have ca um, capitals underlined and actually bold, and I have a purpose for that. In the previous slide, if you take a look at it back to the other one it all met uh, no 12 you'll see it's all messed up it's all hidden and it's so difficult to kind of segregate what i'm trying to get apart it's just a bunch of words on a bunch of paper and for somebody who has a bit of dyslexia or a bit of adhd this is such a very very difficult document to read or that a slide to read by having it a bit more organized if you take a look at the following slide like this one You'll notice here um, uh, on this one, the font is different. So notice that the letters are a lot more clear cut. There are no curly tips. So uh, so it's, it's it's just clean cut um, letters. Um, also, you'll notice that uh, this is what we call sans serif and there's many fonts for that. Notice that the lettering is usually, it's recommended to at least have 12 to 14. And the spacing between the, 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 the the interline spacing we I used over here is a 1.5 spacing. So just to think about our students who are immigrants, who language uh, English is not their first language. Sometimes they might want to write on top of some of the words like their translation or take notes or something that they could connect. What is this information that triggered them? You know, um, so so that's also is important. And also neuroscience research has confirmed that brain likes pretty things, pretty things in this, in our term here, means pretty patterns, structure, um, the layout is inviting. So we are attracted, our brain is attracted to things that he likes. Well, he, I say he, but it likes, right? Uh, so if we present documents that are more organized, are purposely uh, designed with like uh, specific font, specific size, um, spacing between the lines, uh, uh, applying, let's say, numbers. Um, for example, maybe some, some of us have difficulty with a white background, maybe have a, a, a colored background. Using a number system on the pages, the ones who have difficulty getting organized, so when you, they see page one, page two, page three, numbering pages, and also numbering exercises. All of these things that may take maybe few minutes of our time to kind of relook over our documents, uh, it might make a big, big difference um, for our students. And at this point, again, uh, just remember, we have we have um, physical document, paper document, and we have virtual documents, right? Uh, so uh, it's not which one is better, it's just to make whatever information we transfer to our students mostly ex most accessible. So now in category two, in category two, we might think about, um, like you saw over here, emotional and sensory strategies. So these strategies really aim the emotional and the sensorial aspect of learning, whether they're applied to lightening the stress and anxiety load or to improve student engagement in a classroom. Remember, a lot of our students, again, they're, they're more kinesthetic students. So they think and self-regulate with their hands. So providing them with fidget and or manipulative to accommodate them is essential and should be normalized. What does that mean? It should be there, it should be explained, it should be uh, encouraged to be used um, in a classroom. Exactly like we use the calculator. Everybody doesn't see anything wrong with using a calculator. So there's nothing wrong with using a squishy ball or whatever it takes to help the student self-regulate, okay? Uh, another thing that I found extremely interesting while I was doing my research is lighting. Lighting is a very important component uh, for the ones who, for the students who have some sensitivity to light. Research has shown 
long exposure to intense neon lighting in school in our classroom ca causes headaches for the ones who are more sensitive. So lighting options usually is great when it's possible, of course, right? Um, just remember, uh, some of our some of our desk has a very shiny surface, so they do act sometimes uh, as a reflectors uh, of light to the, our students' eyes. So if you have a student who have a bit of um, uh, eyesight issues uh, or have sensitivity to light, this might actually exhaust the student, and it's a it's it's a it's an element that might help. So, um, so having a dimmed area in a classroom by design to accommodate students who have uh, light sensitivity might be actually a good thing. Um, also, uh, remember our, our students who have lots of attention issues and sensory stimuli, the ones who are, we recognize they have the hyperactivity element or the, uh, the, the stimulation element that may require some white noise to regulate their attentions and their nerves, actually. So during whatever session of teaching you're giving, uh, maybe in the part that they have to work alone, maybe they might opt for working alone. So allowing them to listen to music. So like almost like almost like a white noise for them so they could kind of focus and control their thoughts. So these all our ideas and options, of course, that are great to have uh, to, and actually uh, um, provide to the student to improve his learning, his or her learning. Finally, if we get if we get to uh, the cognitive strategies, the cognitive strategies, cognitive meaning just the way of learning, how we learn. So a metacognitive is like usually a reflection on how we learn. So in this case, we're talking about just cognitive strategies, how we teach the student with helping them learn. Okay, so in the age network, of course, in the adult general education network, the majority of our students have learning difficulties. And we all know that they're the 20% that we see, the, the, the majority of those 20% that we see in high school come to us. And obviously, since high school did not work for them, we hope we're not repeating the same methods in adult ed. So being conscious of these difficulties, uh, cognitive measures must be put into place to support the learner. So cognitive strategy help our student, the student learn. So differentiation in this category is individualized. It's very, very individualized. And to be able to deliver the best support possible, you need to know your student. You need to take the time to, to bond, to create some sort of connection with these students so you know where they need help and actually to be more successful in implementing the best strategies possible. So I cannot repeat it enough for that, <laughs> okay? So one of areas, some areas that maybe some ideas of strategies that we can uh, we could present to our student is um, in term of concept of time. It is very, very difficult for to some of our learners, time management. So an idea to do that, so it's, it's an important skill to learn, not just for our class for life, actually. So. For the time being, for our classrooms, could be uh, providing them with an analog clock with like indication where it starts, where it begins, uh, finding a system that works for them, you know, training them, uh, um, training them to, to kind of see, so to reduce anxiety, training them for the exams room, if you want, uh, in terms of time management, um, maybe writing on the pa paper. Uh, how long it took them and how it should take them, how long it should, so they'll know they have to improve and, and, and you know, be conscientious of that. Listen, I'm Other so sorry to interrupt. It's just that there's two minutes left in this session. Uh, I wonder if you can condense some of wrap the it items. Up. I'm well, actually not wrap it up. wrap it up, just condense it. And I just wanted to bring attention to um, a slight nuance. It was asked if uh, a voiceover accompanying the slides would be an ex an attempt at differentiation, multiple modes of presentation. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you see, you see, uh, Giovanna and, and everybody. The idea, whatever you do, it all depends on. These are the key points: knowing your student, give them, get them involved, try new things with them, and don't be scared to make mistakes because it's through mistake that you both learn what you both need. From, from the teacher and from the uh, from the uh, student's perspective. So I'll let uh, Julie uh, uh, synthesize for you the last few slides. 
Thank you, Michelin. So I'm going to let you uh, read the, mo the, the synthesis portion so that I do not take too much time. And I'm going to go straight to what I call my differentiation pyramid. And the idea behind this differentiation pyramid that I, and this is my own doing, it's just an attempt at putting it into a more synthesized uh, fashion. Uh, I was thinking of, um, why do we bring in mechanical, emotional, cognitive strategies, and how how many students are we actually targeting? Hence, the reason behind um, the the pyramid. And if we look at the reasons why, or the focus of implementation is, we are thinking of special needs, anxiety, learning disabilities, whatever the learning difficulty is or the need is. That's where we start from. But if we look on the other side of the pyramid, you'll notice that the outcome of this particular implementation of strategies will potentially uh, help all learners. Whether we bring in uh, music or virtual spaces or anything cognitive, everybody's gonna pick and choose and everybody's gonna be able to take what they need and make something out of it. So whatever the implementation focus is, the outcome is usually more generalized. Before we go on to, and I don't think we're going to have much time for questions, we want to emphasize to remember that there are as many ways to differentiate as there are learners in our classrooms, and there are potentially as many field experts as there are educators here today. So this is a call to action, as we say. We want you to experiment with uh, differentiation and explore it some more. We have a, uh, a longer, more extensive presentation. We can bring in uh, help with implementation of uh, techniques and strategies. So do not hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, you have our website down here. And in the chat, you're going to be able to find the, uh, the feedback form that we have for our presentation. I'm gonna put it right in there so that you have it in the chat and you can get started uh, and do your uh, feedback form for us. This is going to help us immensely, okay? Because we do have, uh, we do have the intention of keep going with this, practice, do some more, explore some more. You have additional resources if you're interested in some uh, strategies and ideas. And everything that we referred to is uh, in the works cited and credits portion of this. The PDF version of the presentation will be available for all of you. Uh, it's going to be in the chat as well. Michigan is going to copy and paste the site, the, uh, the URL to our presentation. Hi, can I just add one point, please? Go ahead. I was done anyway, so go ahead. I just, I just want to bring your attention also that we were super, super lucky and privileged to have Karine Jacques in the audience. And Karine had put together a book that's called Interve Inter Intervene to Success. So it's going to be a reference manual, a reference book or a guide for all teachers to use. And hopefully we're hoping soon enough she will actually do a little webinar to present it to us with Avi. So just to let you know, there is some other guide uh, references that will be available to teachers to directly use. So that, uh, just to mention that. So we're super lucky to have all the support we need as teachers in our field. So thank you so, so much for coming and attending. And I, we hope if you have questions, please write to us, send us uh, any comments or any, any concern. Uh, we're here to help you. Thank you On so behalf much. of Rissi, we thank you very much, Ms. Lynn and Julie. I put thank the you. link to the Gather Town if you want to peruse over lunch. Otherwise, have yourselves a wonderful lunch. This was wonderful, ladies. And uh, thank you. Reach out to the ladies if you want to bring this into your centers. Thank you. Have a nice day, everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, Giovanna.